Hi everyone, this is Ashley with Marshflower Studio. In this video, I'm going to be making a little Among Us character. So, I don't have an actual Among Us still here to show you for the beginning of the video. I do, however, have another little friend that I made the same way. Uh, so you can kind of see the size of this guy before you get started. So with this pattern, you can do all kinds of stuff other than just the Among Us crewmates. Um, I've done a bunch of these where they're little monsters. You, know, you give them a little eyeball, some little fuzz up top with some different yarn, some scrap yarn that you've got still laying around and they're super adorable. So uh, for the Among Us I'm going to be making in the video, I am going to be using the nice traditional kind of red. Um, this is one of the I Love This yarns, and the color is Fire Red. So um, for our little Among Us crewmate, uh, we have to start with making his two legs. So we're going to have a magic circle. We're going to have six single crochets in our magic circle. Four, five, six. We'll pull that tight. Our next row is going to be an increase row. So we'll have six increases for a total of 12 stitches at the end of this row. So there's one and two. There's three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten, eleven and twelve. Okay, then we're going to have five rows of single crochet. All right, so one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's one row. One, two, three, four, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That makes three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve, so that makes four. I'm gonna do one more, and then we're gonna repeat the exact same thing. Right, we're gonna repeat the exact same thing for the second leg. So I'm gonna do a chain. Cut my yarn, pull that loop through, and we'll do our second leg. I'm going to try to do this leg a little bit faster so that our entire video is not just kind of me doing lots and lots of single crochets. <laughs> So, 
First two stitches of these single crochet rows and I'm going to put my stitch marker in so that I don't have to count So a lot of the projects that I do, um, if you have an extra single crochet at the end of a row, you're not exactly at the starting point or the ending point, um, it's not going to hurt the overall um, little thing that you're making. And the majority of the time, I won't say always, but the majority of the time, nobody is going to know that you had an extra single crochet and that your one of your rows started in a different spot, okay? And I don't know if you've seen the... Uh, the Instagram posts but there are apparently these little old ladies that crochet car covers for like sports cars and they are insane like it's ridiculous how amazing these things are I'm not affiliated with them in any way <laughs> I just think that's really cool That's my crochet goals, right? So one, two, three, four. Gotta do one more row here. Finish up my second leg. And if you're ever kind of bored and want to look up something to help you get motivated, they're definitely it. Okay. So now that I have my second leg completed, I am going to chain three. I'm gonna get rid of the stitch marker. And in the loop or the stitch right beside where we finished off our first one, in that very next stitch, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do 12 single crochets around this first leg that we made. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then we're going to do three single crochets across that chain. It's getting in the way. So there's one, two, and three. We'll continue on the second leg and do 12 single crochets all the way around it. three more single crochets back across that chain. All right. So our next stitch is going here. 
So make sure you don't miss that. So I finished my chain single crochets here and right next to it that next single crochet gets a little bit lost if you don't look for it. So make sure that you go in the right spot there. From here you're making 14 rows of single crochet. Okay so again I'm just going to use my stitch marker so I don't have to try to count um, each and every row 14 times. After this first row, I am going to pause for a second and sew up the bottom of my little Among Us Kai. Because where you connect the legs uh, can sometimes get a little bit of a hole and we don't want to be able to see the stuffing coming out down there so I'll usually do a row or two while it's still easy to get to it and um, kind of sew those shut a little bit So, you see where you connect it to this row and there's this kind of bigger hole. I'm going to take that thread, that yarn that I was using, my working yarn from that leg, and I'm going to put a couple little pass-throughs here. And the goal is just to make that hole smaller, right? Like we don't have to cinch it up crazy tight or anything like that. We just want to make it a little bit smaller so it's not quite so obvious. And then I'll tie that with my starter yarn so that it stays in place. And we'll tuck those down into the legs so we don't have to keep fighting them out of the way. All right, and back to 13 more rows <laughs> of single crochet. For anyone who may be new to my channel or just maybe hasn't seen one of the videos where I talk about this before, um, I use the large hairpins as stitch markers. Um, it's not your typical stitch marker, but I find they're easier to work with than some of the plastic stitch markers um, that you can typically find in the store or that come in some of the crochet hook sets. Um, these slide on and off very easily without having to undo any kind of like safety pin, you know, clip. They don't mess up your yarn. You can use them for everything from something that's a little more fine to the bulkier yarns. I had some trouble with some of the plastic ones that came with some of my hook sets. They would just fall off as I worked around them. And it can be a little bulky and cumbersome to try to work around them, depending on what you're doing. So the, the hairpins were kind of an easy option. Um, kind of in place of those plastic stitch markers. So if you are an Among Us fan, 
drop some comments down below what your favorite Among Us color is. My daughter loves this little game. I never could get the hang of it myself, but I think the little characters are super cute. And she was explaining how they all have, well, they all have different colors, but there are, I guess, stickers where you can add some little extra fun things to them. I could be completely wrong because I was having this explained to me by my kiddo. Not my toddlers. <laughs> I have an older daughter too. My toddlers are usually my background noise all day, every day. But while I'm making this video, they have already gone to bed. There are a couple people who have patterns similar to this one um, on their websites and such where they will explain how to do one of the dead crewmates so it's just the bottom half and then the bone sticking out of the middle they're pretty cute and most of the ones I've seen you can do this bottom and then just do that little difference to create that different kind of a top for it. But there are lots of other hookers. I still think it's funny that crochet, people who crochet are called hookers. Um, there are lots of other hookers who have created little patterns for like the banana on the head, the baseball hat. Um, some of just little shapes. At one point, I had as many different colors of Among Us crewmates as I could stand to make. I think there was 15 of them, actually. And I carried them down to one of the local stores that sells some of the things that I make for me. And... I was kind of expecting them to sit there for a while and then have to just pick them up and bring them home. But every single one of them sold. So I just, I find that really funny. Sometimes you don't know what's going to get the most attention until you try it and just put it out there. And there are definitely certain crowds that go for different kinds of things. There's actually, um, I forget exactly what they called it, but it's kind of like a, a ball slash vendor event. Uh, here in Savannah coming up soon and the 
theme for it is like vampires and they were wanting vendors who had um, items that kind of catered more towards that vampire, steampunk, zombie kind of group. And I was a little bummed because I don't have, like I have some things that would work well for that group, but I don't have a lot. I definitely don't have enough to try to do an event with them. All right, let's see how many rows we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so four more rows for me. One of the things that's kind of tough as a hooker <laughs> is kind of pre-planning and preparing for upcoming events and holidays. Sometimes vendor events or um, opportunities to just go out and sell things doesn't fall at a time of year when it's convenient to sell things like jack-o'-lanterns or Christmas trees or you know Valentine's Day hearts and for example there is a handmade fair that's going to be, I believe, the first weekend in November. And I really wanted to sign up. But it's going to be two days. One of those days was Friday. And with my two tiny tornadoes, trying to go anywhere on a Friday and do anything productive, it's not happening. But I wish that event was at least a week or two earlier because then people could really kind of push lots of Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas where with it being after Halloween, you're kind of more limited to Thanksgiving and Christmas. when you're making lots of a particular item, like if you're making lots of different pumpkins for Halloween, you gotta start working on those earlier rather than later. <laughs> All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. One more row. And then we will start to stuff and close in our little Among Us man. So, now that we have all 14 rows done, we are going to do three single crochets and a decrease, and we will be dropping our stitch count from 30 to 24. Okay, so one, two, three, and decrease on four, 
I'm gonna do decreases front loop only, pull up your loop, and then yarn over and pull through. Five, six, seven, same thing. Front loop only, under both of those front loops, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through both. Nine, 10, 11, decrease on 12, 13, 14, 15, decrease on 16, 17, 18, 19, decrease on 20, 21, 22, 23, and decrease on 24. Okay. I am going to pull my loop out a little bit and stuff uh, the bottom half of this guy. We don't want to stuff too much because we don't want to see the stuffing showing through our stitches. We just want to make sure that he's going to keep his shape. Put a little bit more down in that tummy area. Our next row is 24 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Our next row is going to be a decrease row, so we're going to do two single crochets and a decrease to take us down to 18 stitches. So one, two, decrease on three. Four, five, decrease on six, seven, eight, decrease on nine, ten, eleven, decrease on twelve, thirteen, fourteen, Decrease on 15, and 16, 17, and decrease on 18. All right. <coughs> Pardon me. Our next row is going to be single crochet and decrease. So we're going to go down to 12 stitches for this row. I'm going to take my stitch marker out so it's not banging against the table anymore. So one, decrease on two, three, decrease on four, five, Decrease on six, seven, decrease on eight, nine, decrease on ten, eleven, and decrease on twelve. All right, so we're going to finish stuffing 
our little Among Us crewmate here. And then we'll do our final six decreases to close the top of this guy up. And I'll do my six decreases and then we'll sew him shut. There's one. Two. Three. Four, five, and six. And I'll do my little slip stitch here to kind of bring that down and fasten off. Sew that up in a little bit. Right now, we have to make his face shield, right? So this is our little body. For our face shield, I'm gonna use white. I use a soft white, not a super bright white. And Trying to do a magic circle. We need a slip knot. So a slip knot. We'll do chain six. And then we're going to turn. And in the second chain, we're going to do a single crochet. And then three more. Two. Three. Four. In our last chain, we're going to do three single crochets all in that same chain there. And then on the other side, as we continue to turn, we're going to do three more, sorry, single crochets. And then in our last chain down here, we're going to do an increase. All right, for technically our next row, we're going to have an increase. And then three single crochets. One, two, and three. We'll do three increases here on the end. So one and two, three and four, five, and six. Okay. And then we'll do three more single crochets. And then two more increases. All right, for this row, we're just going to do 18 single crochets all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, so it, it's going to bubble up just a little bit. If you want to add um, the kind of edging in black, you would just do a color change and then 18 single crochets with the black before fastening off. I like to just leave it white, um, but that's a personal preference. So I'm going to do my slip stitch and fasten off my white with enough tail to sew it on. So there's our little face shield. And then for the backpack, which is also going to be in your main body color, we're going to do a chain eight. So make your slip knot. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then in the second chain from the hook, we will single crochet seven back across that chain. Working in the chain can always be a little difficult. So we're going to do between seven and eight rows um, to create your backpack. It depends on how tall you want your backpack to be. If you want it taller than eight rows, then do nine. Right? If you want it shorter, do six. I know there are lots and lots of people who want to follow the pattern exactly as it's written. But when you've been doing this long enough, you come to realize that sometimes changing it a little bit actually makes it so you like it more and will definitely make it more unique. Especially with the store that I sell some things out of, the things that do better are the things that are more unique and eclectic. Um, you may live in an area where things that are more traditional are the better sellers. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see. I'm going to stop at seven for this one. Sometimes it'll depend on your yarn weight, your hook size, um, your tension, whether or not you want to make it a little bit bigger or not. Okay. For the backpack though, I do recommend doing single crochets all the way around the outside edge just to give it a little bit more of a finished look. So I did a chain one. And then I'm going to come and just start doing some single crochets in some of the sides of these turning rows. And we'll do single crochets across that bottom starting chain. Then up the other side. And 
Okay. I'm gonna go into that first single crochet from this top row and just do a slip stitch to finish that off. So I'll pull out enough of a red tail to sew that onto the back of my little crewmate here. And he will have his little backpack. And you can put a little bit of stuffing underneath here if you want it to kind of pooch out a little bit. Um, and there are different ways that you can sew you know, things onto your little creatures. Um, for this particular one, because you want it to stand out, I would come in behind the single crochet loops and sew kind of up and down through those and not kind of sew over and back and forth the edge because you want to be able to see this outline of the backpack, okay? For the face shield, I will um, kind of do from the outside up through those loops and then back over the outside because I want to kind of tuck that down and make it appear, you know, as it's part of the suit and not just attached to the back of the suit, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to get these guys sewn on here. Remember to hit that thumbs up button and like this little Amour Among Us guy. <laughs> um, subscribe if you haven't already so you can get notified when new videos come out. Make sure you check out some of the videos that have already been posted. There's some pretty cool stuff in there to make. Um, lots of great ideas for projects that don't take a ton of time and you can just sit down and make them. Um, if you have any comments, questions, anything you'd like to see me make, pop those in the comments and I'll work on that. Um, also, in the description is some are sorry are some links to the website that I sell stuff from uh, there is a gallery page on my website so you can see lots of things that I've made um, if there's anything on that page that you would like to see me make for a video just let me know I'd be more than happy to um, I love pretty much everything I've ever made so I would not be heartbroken if I had to make another one for a video. <laughs> um, I also do some drawing, some watercolor. Um, so I have designs on Redbubble and Tee Public. So the links for those are on there as well. And my kind of ID, I guess, for Instagram and Facebook are on there also. So. Thanks, you guys, for watching these videos. It's It means a lot that there are so many other people out there that love this as much as I do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!